I love you with my heart, with my soul, with every fiber of my entire being. How are you feeling right now, beautiful soul? So I interviewed a brave soul, a survivor from some very heavy, satanic ritual abuse. And it's really important before we go into this interview that I let you know that what you're about to hear, some of the information is very disturbing. If you're a child, if you're under the age of 18, I suggest you turn this video off right now. This isn't for children. A very brave lady came forwards and shared her story with me. And we're gonna go into some of that story today. We're only gonna to touch the tip of the iceberg, really. There is so much more to tell. Um, but what you are gonna hear is gonna be difficult for some people. Uh, the, the levels of abuse and torture were horrific. So please be aware of this before you continue this video. This channel, this Star Magic Healing channel, is really about meditation, healing, positivity, sharing tools that you can use to, to elevate your life. But at the same time, it's about the truth. And this beautiful soul has a voice. Her voice must be heard to heal others that have also been through these traumatic experiences, to give them the courage to come forwards, to, to let them realize that they're not on their own. And at the same time, to give this awesome being a chance to heal because by sharing and expressing, you do get to heal. You're gonna hear stories about sexual abuse. You're gonna hear ritual abuse involving the Queen of England and her husband, blood drinking, spinal fluid removal, um, sexual abuse and traumatic abuse that is just, I didn't even know that some of these things were possible. I mean, it, it just blew my mind hearing this experience. And to think that someone could do these things to a child, it's mind boggling. So please just be aware before you continue this video that some of the information may shock you. I love you, you're amazing. And thank you for being part of the Star Magic Tribe. Thank you for watching this channel. Thank you for being who you are on this planet. Thank you for being courageous enough to come down onto this planet in the first place and to play this crazy game of life on this green and blue ball. I love you unconditionally. Beautiful souls. I'm here with Tracy and we're going to be discussing certain events and situations that have happened during Tracy's life. About a week or so ago, I put up a video regarding uh, children that were human trafficked, uh, kept in underground bunkers, being rescued. And it actually invoked a response from, from several different people that have actually been through this experience themselves. And Tracy is one of them. And so Tracy and I are just gonna have a discussion today and talk about these events and just see, see what happens as we share. So Tracy, First of all, I want to say thank you for being here. I respect you. I know this stuff's not easy. And I just respect you for being who you are, for being brave enough to, to come out and speak. So thank you for being here. Thank you. How are you feeling? Um, a little nervous. I, like, I do not know um, with my uh, repressed memories what will come out. OK. Yeah. I mean, we may as well get straight into it. Uh, I, we spoke the other day uh, for a short 
short period of time on, on the telephone after first connecting, you know, literally the day before. And um, we were t you, you were you were telling me about a ritual that you were you have memories of where you saw another child being sacrificed. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? I I have memories of um, a ceremony. Um, in, in these memories, I'm a very small child. Um, I there are uh, there are lots of people there um, and other children as well. Um, it's a firstborn ceremony. Um, I'm a, the firstborn of my family. Um, the things that I remember is just everybody's kind of walking around in a, a weird kind of trance state. Uh, as as children, nobody's like being wiggly, you know, like regular kids, like they can't stand still in a, in a church very long, you know, or any type of ceremony without being wiggly, but that's not happening. Uh, so we're kind of, yeah, just everybody's kind of just going through emotions. Can you remember your age? Uh, definitely. I, I would, I would guess that most of these memories that have been coming out is definitely like preschool um type ages and were um, you standing around in a circle in the ceremony everybody's standing everybody has black robes uh there's a kind of a main priest guy um and i'm kind of looking up at the stage or the area that he is kind of through the people and uh, he's holding a, a baby up like this and saying words. And I don't know that I'm really registering what the words really are. Um, Was the priest human? Yes. So the baby's held up and something said over it. And then they're, they had a dagger and uh, they, they killed it. And uh, there is an energy at the time that the knife strikes the baby's chest, there's an energy that went out and hit me in the chest. And um, it was very painful. And it was shocking. And for me, I'm, I, I'm, I can't believe they killed a baby and I can't believe that I'm in a world where they kill babies. That's what, that's what my memory is saying. Like, so the, that was looking at that event a, a couple different times. The the newest information was that 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 power that like shot out at me and hit in my chest like that. What did it feel like when the energy hit you? Uh, well, I, I actually still feel it right now, uh, and I have kind of felt it uh, for years. It feels like. Uh, I, it feels like I have a, 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 not a sword, um, like a javelin, uh, the end of a tip in my chest, like what it feels like. So it feels like a very old wound for sure. It's something that has um, irritated me over the years a lot. I've tried to do a lot of energy work with it and sometimes I can't tell if it's like it's just like a memory or if I actually still have to heal it uh, I, I I am unsure but it's it's caused me issues or the memory has over time do you remember who took you to the ceremony was it your parents or was it another family member um my understanding at this point is it was my parents my family my whole family uh, extended family on my dad's side. Uh, but I, I, you know, none of my family would own up to this or uh, they would think I was crazy for saying this. Um, I know for sure that I have dissociative disorder for sure. 
Uh, and, you know, the way that locks, memories have been locked away, uh, I assume even maybe different personalities and... And were your, were your parents um, in, in normal jobs or...? Uh, yes, uh, my dad was a chiropractor, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, uh, as a family, we had a, a chiropractic hospital and there was nurses and staff there and i do remember a lot of a lot of the stuff the torture and stuff happening at that hospital but you, and, and was it owned by your father or grandparents or um my like a a great uncle and my grandfather like all of my my dad and his brothers and his dad and his brothers they were all chiropractors at this hospital. Okay, and did they torture many other children there? Yeah, there was always lots of children around. Um, I, I will say that like, when you talked about like children being rescued, there was, there was an inner part of me uh, that was saying, oh, you won't find them alive. <laughs> That's that's how I was feeling. I was like, oh, they're not going to find them alive. There's no live children. You know, like that, that's what my inner self says. <laughs> so I, I, I don't have any specific recall of seeing children killed, but, uh, except that baby, but I feel like it is something that I am familiar with. Like, Okay, and with the torturing in the in the chiropractic hospital, what what kind of memories have you got of this? I do remember being um, I was I, I remember hanging from a meat hook. Um, and there were other children also hanging uh, from from the memory. It's just. Um, it, it was just, um, is it just extremely painful and figuring out what to do with my breath because it was so hard to breathe. Whilst you were suspended, did anything else happen or were you just suspended in the air? Just suspended in the air and like I, I felt like maybe people came in to check on us maybe, but we were kind of just all in there in the dark hanging. You know, I don't have any scars because the meat hooks were, they were going through my shoulders, you know, like, I don't even have any scars. Then I started to remember like being on beds with the nurses and they would tend to us. And I remember this um, salve that they used like a, it was like a brownish Vaseline type thing. And they would put that on our scars, on our, and that seemed to heal it. it. Seemed to, seemed to be like really powerful stuff. I, I, I think I have a memory of my dad putting it on himself because he was cut too, in some ceremony or something. Um, uh, but, you know, just being in beds. Uh, and while we're healing, just being hooked up and having like our blood drained and um, spinal fluid drained. They showed us images like movies, scary images. Uh, yeah, just being on beds and doing um, rehab, you know, like a, just a, in the healing process. And this chiropractic hospital, it was a normal practice by day. And, what, and these, these tortures happened in, in, in a different, like underground or in a special room or? I know that we served some, you know, some people from around the country. I do remember like we would have groups of the Amish coming to get, the natural care and stuff like that. Um, but in these times where the kids are being tortured and stuff, like I 
kind of feel like that the hospital is like we're the only ones in there because they had the our fourth floor of it was only four floors high and the fourth floor of the hospital was the kids part and I mean I suppose the other floors could have had normal patients and us kids could have been up there and they wouldn't have known if we were just like a regular patient um, or not. I, I don't know. Quite the, the rest of the hospital could have just been a front really for what was happening. I, I, I'm beginning to, to, to think that. I'm beginning to question that. Um, but again, I have uh, no one in my family that I could talk to. And, Frankly, I don't know if they're still involved, and I know the hospital is long gone, but um, they're like we had two of them actually. There was one built in 1930 something, and one in 1945. And and those memories that I'm remembering are the ones, the one built in 45. Do you remember any um, sexual happening? Was there any kind of sexual torture or abuse? <sighs> uh, yeah, yeah. The the sex abuse is 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 torture. It's not not just sex. Uh, I think they kind of just pick you out. I don't know. I got picked by this one man. Uh, I have no idea who he is right at this point, but uh, so it, they uh, put a, they cut into my ribs, through my ribs, and into the lung, and they put a tube uh, in there and um so the man i was with his thing was uh the oral or he sodomized me like he put his genitals in my mouth but i was such a very small child that the it was so huge that it cut off all breathing so the only air that i was getting was uh through that tube and to through my rib cage. So that was that was really difficult. Uh, I think it was very painful on my jaw, you know, and, and it and it was he it was shoved so far down the throat that of course no air even came in through the nose because it, it was all there was just no way to get any air except through that. So there's that. And then I have um, memories of being like in a contained area, maybe kind of like a, a hole, but it was square in the, in the ground. And like I was there with other kids and they would stand around above us and uh, like jerk off and then we had like just semen all over us like just all over like it was so much we were there for days it seemed like and it was all over us we were just covered just covered in it mm -hmm. memories of ceremonies uh where everybody was in in black hoods and stuff and um like there were I was in black covering too, but laying down on and like with our legs open and like they would just kind of, the men would just go down the line and one after the other um, stick their penises in us and it, that was a weird family thing. So I don't know. There's a lot of stuff like that. Uh, Have you ever confronted your father and asked him about this? Uh, he's, he's passed away, but uh, prior to that, I, I did, uh, you know, confront him on just sex abuse, like in our home. Uh, and that's really all I thought had happened. Uh, it, I spent, have spent most of my adult life, the last 30 years, you know, recovering memories of just the sex abuse of my father in my home. So your um, father actually, actually abused you at home? 
Yeah, I'll just tell you before, before I started to look at this, I was feeling pretty solid. I was like, wow, I've done such a great job of myself. I have, I've done the hard work. I am doing great. And then this started <laughs> coming up <laughs> and I'll tell you, I, I feel like my mind is broken. Like, oh my gosh. Um, I think I'm running into like the mind control stuff. Uh, you know, where, where there's, where it threatens you, you know, to don't look at this or you'll die or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I mean, for, for people watching, um, I think it's important to note that when children are taken into these situations, it's kind of pre-planned. And whilst the child is in the womb, then the torture kind of starts because what they do is they try and split the personality of the child um, by creating pain and suffering whilst the baby's in the womb. And as soon as the, the baby is delivered, um, they use sexual abuse, other forms of torture to fragment the baby and split the baby's personality at a young age, which makes it easier to control, which makes it easier to kind of slate, blank slate the memory of a child as they grow up. So it's very hard to recall these memories until you start getting, re you know, rememberings or you start to dive into it through meditation or some kind of healing. Um, so what you're saying in terms of, you know, having these kind of spotty memories and all of this is, 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 is quite normal. Yeah, I, I've definitely dealt with the fragments. Like I said, I thought I was just dealing with, you know, some severe child abuse of my father. Um, Cause I do remember like sex abuse, you know, when I was in diapers and stuff. And um, um, so I, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to looking for the red, the flags inside, like, aha, there's a little fragment over here. I can tell something's like trying to run away, you know, and like in my meditation, I can go after it. Um, so yeah, some of that's starting up again, but with, with the satanic uh, abuse stuff. Have you got any brothers or sisters? I do. I have a, a younger brother and a younger sister. They're, um, we're all a couple years apart. Um, and I, I've shared some of this with my sister, but she just was, she struggled with some of the sex abuse, just like she, she, she does believe that she was sexually abused by my father as well. Uh, but, but when I even started to go into the extremes of that, she was like, ah, oh, I don't think it was that bad. You know, and of course my mom says, oh no, you got, it wasn't that bad, you guys, well, you know, just, there's no way it could have been that bad and all that kind of stuff. So then when I started to bring up the sexual abuse uh, or the satanic abuse, she's, my sister's was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But one, one thing for me uh, that really stands out for me in my healing process, so back in, uh, my 20s, when I was just started to just barely get the memories of being abused by my father, uh, I also started to be, uh, I was attacked by, by demons on a regular basis, uh, almost daily, uh, being tormented uh, by them, uh, you know, being held down in between, you know, sleep and wake. Um, I had I remember one time I was I was in a state like that and one of them like actually jumped in through this wound. It actually jumped in through this and like moved into all different parts of my body. It was weird. Um, and another thing is to just in my awakening process and learning about uh, over the last few years, learning about like uh, extraterrestrials and stuff and the gray codes all that I, I i am familiar with those types of things um when i look back at the 
memories of those of those demons they were all reptilian some of them were really little like three feet tall and some of them were really big like seven feet tall and uh but anyways, i was i was tormented on a regular basis uh and i was terrified um over time i began to realize i i thought I thought they brought those negative feelings to me, but I think they amplified the memories that I didn't, couldn't remember. They amplified the terror that was inside me. And I had a lot of terror inside me attached to those memories. And then as I began to do the work and remember, um, you know, the, that terror came out. And then it's like when they, they came to me, there was nothing they could mess with. So literally, like, they eventually just went away, and I don't have any issue with them anymore. But um, I, thought, I found that to be really interesting as I started to look at the satanic abuse memories coming out, and just, it just seemed like it was a threat. Like, they just, they didn't want you to remember. You know, they have, they set up things to keep you from looking. Um, you know, some of the very first memories I got, I swore, I, I thought I was actually dying. Just remembering the memory, I thought I was actually dying. Um, and then there's, there's feelings of wanting to kill yourself that come up as well. And I think all those, I think all that's programmed. And they just don't want you to remember this stuff. Your, your mind's so fractured and you, you know, you might have other personalities uh, that they know how to bring out when they're ready. I do have a sense of that, like, like they, they created different personalities that they could. Are you aware when that's happening into your consciousness and trying to make you think or feel a certain way? Like as a child, do I have any memories of that? Or but as an adult? As an adult, yeah, I, I, I have learned enough to be able to be able to notice. Um, I, as an adult, I don't, I don't know that I've ever switched into a different personality. Uh, but as a, I think I have kind of memories of doing that as a, as a kid. But you know, my process started when I was like 21. So it started fairly young. So uh, I, 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 don't, I don't remember a lot. Um, I mean, in terms of as an adult, running into any type of a, a switch where I would switch, but I'm well, not sure. <laughs> when, when we spoke um, <clears throat> the other day, uh, before the weekend, I remember you telling me that in one of the rituals, you kind of looked up and <clears throat> there was kind of like a, a man that was kind of half man and half oh, something else. Yeah, like I, I don't know my age, uh, but, but the memory of that is, um, is of that thing. Uh, uh, I'm on a table and it, it is raping me. Um, it was a man, um, with it was probably I don't know it was very tall taller than a normal human uh, with a very uh, the chest was just very manly very muscular um, and the head was a a bull and um, its eyes like I said there he 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 was just very intelligent and so like looking at the head of the bull um it doesn't look like our bulls like we would see like a cow in the field uh because of the level of intelligence it just i don't know it just it just looked very uh like it looked he didn't scare me i mean like at least in my memory i'm not afraid i'm i could be like like I said, any time of those rituals are going on, there's like, everybody's like in a weird trance state. I, I think they use drugs. They put you on some sort of drugs or you're in just a weird state. Um, so I'm, I'm not fighting this rape. I'm just laying there. 
and it's doing its thing. Um, I've heard the word breeder used, and I have, um, I've had flashes of abortions happening. Like I might have had, a, they might have taken a lot of babies. Um, So I, I don't know. I that's but that's a memory. Um, so you think maybe they got you pregnant and then aborted the baby after however many months? And that yeah, yeah. If it if it was if that thing did, I don't know if I had a, if that thing gave me a baby. I definitely though had pregnancies for sure. Um, multiple um and it seems like they didn't use uh yeah they just they just did the pregnancy and it was extremely painful and again that's i think any chance that they get to cause it an extreme pain and trauma is like they just take it <laughs> uh because my memories are, are so painful that just just the memory itself is sometimes too much for me to bear. Like I, I literally have to just ask my angels and guys just to help me make it through the memory because the, the ghost pains are excruciating. So it feels like real time, trauma, pain, excruciating when the memories are taking place. They're embedded that deeply. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was worse for real, but the but but yeah, the ghost pain is definitely uh, is definitely terrible. And sometimes I sometimes at that point I feel like my mind is breaking, <laughs> and I and I really feel like my guides and my angels like help me from from losing it. Did you go to school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just regular public school. And do you have any memories of anything at the public school? Um, I feel like, like that, the memory where I have, where we're kind of like just laying down and everybody's like taking their turn. I feel like, uh, feel like there were kids in there that I knew from school. I feel like there were teachers. I feel like there were, judges, I feel like there were principals, I feel like there were police officers, they, I feel like they were, there were so, as, as, a, as a kid, I knew that there was no help for me, because all of them were, all of them were Satanists, <laughs> like, like, I would never, ever be able to get any, any help. Um, I kind of have a memory of, of being in school, and I asked the teacher if I didn't have to dress uh, for gym class. Um, I, I felt like she really pressured me to do it, to get dressed. So I did. And, and I think what she saw was probably some bruising or something on me. Um, she pulled me aside and, um, it, it's not super clear. This is not a very clear memory. So, but to the best of my knowledge, I, I think like she was questioning me and, and, yeah. And I said, you, you can't help me. And she said, no, we can. I can get you help. I said, no, you can't. And I said, one of two things are going to happen. If you really uh, are going to do this, you'll probably lose your job. Um, you know. And then if you really, really, really push it, they might kill you. <laughs> so don't, don't even bother. Just leave me alone. I told you I didn't want to dress for gym. Just leave me alone, you know. Um, and I, I do think that, I, I don't think I saw her again. So I think she probably did get fired if, she, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think she was gone. So. Do you think your mother was aware of everything? Yeah. I have a memory and it, it, uh, it honestly seems like it's before the first born ceremony and maybe even like a preparation for it. But just that she was just like, my, my mother was just 
saying all this stuff, but she basically said all I was was just a um, failed abortion. I, I, that seemed to be a term that she used with me quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think all of, all of the family was involved in it. And can you, can you share us anything about your family lineage, like where they came from? I, I don't know. I don't know it, but I feel like it's in here somewhere. I know that, that after I had my first son, I've had two kids. Um, I became really afraid and everybody thought I was going crazy. Uh, that's when I started to have some memories of like the cloaks, the black cloaks and all that kind of stuff. And I remember being terrified that my mom was going to try and put blood in my son's milk and that they were after him because he's firstborn. Um, everybody thought I was super crazy and, um, everybody turned on me. Um, I wanted to divorce my husband cause he was beating me. And, um, anyways, family, friends, everybody like turned on me. And, um, I got my, they took my kids from me in the divorce or my husband got my kids in the divorce. So it was just really, really difficult time, but I had no idea what was going on and I would have never considered something like this as possible. So at the time, they just thought I was losing my mind. I think my dad even suggested that it sounded like I had a, a brain tumor or something. <laughs> so I was having all sorts of visions too. I was having visions I was, and I was being visited by angels. Um, yeah. Are you in contact with your sons now? Yes. Yes. I, and I remained, I, I was, I did see them regularly, so they weren't completely taken away. And um, in, in the period of time where I was trying to deal with the, the demonic torture that I was going through, I, I went into the Christian church and, um, and that's really all I knew to, to do. Um, and I, I learned a lot of uh, spiritual warfare. I prayed a lot of really, 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 really strong prayers over my sons. And um, I really feel like that was, um, it was powerful enough that, that I covered them. I, I feel pretty strongly that I did. Do you think your father and your husband tried to do anything with your sons? Uh, I think everybody wanted to, but like I said, I, I don't think they were able. I don't think they were able to. Okay. I could be. I could be wrong. Uh, I have. I have like talked to my sons about some of this stuff coming out, and uh, yeah, the, the, I, I don't think my sons struggle in in believing me. I think they believe me. How old are they? Um, 24 and 21. Okay. Is, is your mother still here? She is. Have you ever confronted her? No, nah, I, and I won't. She's, um, she's like addicted to pain drugs and she's just gone. She's gone. And it's not really. It, can't hardly have a conversation with her. Okay. Do you think maybe because of all the things that she's done and taken part in, she's just trying to numb the pain of it all? Um, likely. Uh, she also has a, a spinal injury and it just kind of makes me wonder because it's kind of in the same area of my spine, like where they were draining spinal fluid. Just kind of makes me wonder if something happened to her. Maybe she was a victim of the abuse and carried it on with you. I, I think the thing is with, with those Satanists, or it seems like they do it to their own kids. They, they've all been through it. Like, it seems like it's a thing. I, you know, I don't think anybody's not getting abused, even the ones that are perpetrating it on you. Like, but she seems like 
to me, she seems like she's, um, her mind is fractured, seems to me. I don't know. I, so it, it so it, I, and I used to think that about my dad too. Like he would switch. He would be in one moment, he would be this great dad. And the next moment he'd be the most evil thing you and cold human being on the planet. Like, and at times, like when he was being the nice one, like he didn't seem to have any memory of, I don't know. It, it just makes me wonder, I, I don't know. Maybe the same thing happened to both your parents and it just went down through the line. Yeah, I, I think that they, I think they do it on purpose, I don't know. I, I almost have like an inkling inside that says like, Oh, you, you should be privileged that you're suffering this way. It's so good that you're suffering this way. Like, this is so awesome that you're such a, you're better than everybody around you. You know, like I kind of, that, that feeling inside, like, cause like I said, they're so proud of what they believe in. I mean, it's just a religion, right? Like they're completely in it. I mean, did they openly discuss Satan, or did they openly discuss Satan? Uh, I, I've never, never, like, if you would have asked me before any I started remembering this, I would have told you, yeah, we didn't really believe in anything growing up um, at all. So uh, we, we, I think, like, we went to church on Easter a couple times, but we weren't really, yeah, we, we, there wasn't really any religion. Um, seems to just be void of religion. So yeah, nothing was openly discussed. I just know that my mom was just, she hated Christians, like really bad. And when I became a Christian, she, she was, she was pissed. <laughs> she hated Christians. So, but her, her story was that her dad was a christian growing up and her dad beat her or whatever did you ever get like transported anywhere else to be involved in any rituals or, or, or happened kind of like close to home Oof. um well yeah it seemed like we went to some national thing um as a child we did we did go to Walt Disney World two times. Um, I, I think that there were famous people there in these national things. Um, and where were uh, they at these national events? I honestly, I don't know. I just, I'm a child. There's large crowds. Um, like, like hundreds of people or thousands or? I've never been around big crowds, so it's hard for me to determine whether it was like thousands, but it's rather, it's really big. And, and it was in a building? The, it was, it seemed like it was kind of outside, but there was a stage. We saw the queen <laughs> and the anticipation of her showing up. I know that she traveled to the United States in 1976. I would have been seven years old. And that's really close to one of the times that we went to Disney World. I can't remember the famous people, but I know they're famous. Like as a kid, I'm recognizing them. Um, and it was more than just her. I do remember her specifically because I thought she looked like my grandmother. She did her hair the same way. I just thought she looked like my, my grandma. And just, just the anticipation, like the whole crowd there, everybody again is still in that weird trance state and it's still in that weird, there's all this weird mumbling and the things that they say, I just don't remember all the things that they say, but it's just but the anticipation of, all, of these famous people on the stage and, and going through the leading the ceremony and stuff. And Was the queen involved in the ceremony then? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. 
absolutely yeah and was she uh, raping or abusing children what was she doing ceremony it's all um at, at this point when she's on the stage it's, it's all ceremony it's all words and ceremony and worship of the whatever it is the demon i don't remember if we saw it or not i you know it's more like statues and the robes and was everyone dressed the same in like robes or yeah yeah and and the queen was as well maybe with more headgear like a what was like horns uh, or i saw her up close but that stuff is just uh It's so fresh that I just embarrassed to share it. It feels like I, I did see her and her husband. It did seem like her husband changed. First of all, starting to look like that old Dracula movie where he's kind of bald, and, but then, then eventually shaping into like a reptilian. Uh, and like scratching the kids and, and sucking the blood and yeah it doesn't really feel they just seem more like they were into blood more than than they were um sexual stuff and were they put, putting the children through pain before they extracted the blood or was the blood already in well yeah just because well, we were terrified of the monster <laughs> they're turning to monsters <laughs> you know you're terrified of that and they're making these hissing noises right and the teeth and the nails and they're scratching and sucking and yeah you're terrified and did, did the queen turn into another being did, or was she just herself or did all of them change into reptilians? <clears throat> just seemed like it was her and him. I remember him mostly. It seems like I'm sitting on her lap looking down at him, attacking other kids. I know that before they shifted, before they changed shape, like she just spoke so softly. And like I said, I thought she was like my grandma and it was so nice, I liked her. And then it changed and then it just turned into a nightmare and it, just a nightmare. Oh my God, that just sounds insane. No, I would to some people, but these things are real. And I'm again, like, you know, you, you're doing amazing. Thank you for sharing and it's not easy going into these memories and digging deeper, but you're doing amazing. It's, it's, it's also scary to share because, well, just like I said, as a kid, they're everywhere. Uh, I don't want to be targeted. I don't think that I could handle being targeted. I mean, I think I probably previously was targeted, like when I was going through the demonic attacks, right? And I just barely survived that period, <laughs> especially when they took my babies from me. It's like I just, uh, and, and now my babies, I moved to Florida. I'm actually in Florida. My babies are in Denver, you know, and I, I don't want them to become targeted, uh, you know. It, so like talking about any of this openly is, we haven't defeated them yet. <laughs> That's, or maybe we have, and we haven't, we haven't seen it yet, but I, I'm waiting. I, I do remember, oh, this is funny. I remember being on the edge of my seat, uh, watching this um, investigative reporting being done by uh, 
Geraldo Rivera when I was little, and he was trying to uncover satanic worship happening in California um, childcare places. And he had this series going on. I remember just watching it, watching it, and just hoping and hoping that they would get caught, that they would get caught. And I was, you know, intrigued, and I kept watching it, watching it. And what ended up happening, and it just deflated me so much, <laughs> what ended up happening is they, they said the kids made up all the, all their memories were fake memories, planted in by the psychologist. And I was just like, oh. I mean, if as, I was, as I was watching that, I don't know that I was in necessarily in tune with my memories or even remembering my memories, but, but just still, I knew that I wanted, I knew that it would be good for me if those people got caught. <laughs> I felt like it would be good for me if they got caught, but nobody believed them. And then later on in life, when even when I, at 21, I, I went to a, a mental hospital and, and started to come out with some of my uh, sexual abuse and stuff. And they put me in like a PTSD ward thing. And I remember repressed memories were still controversial. <laughs> like, you know, trying to get help. They're trying to say, oh, well, fake memories, fake memories. Like, oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's sort of like what they do you know, when they call you a conspiracy theorist, if you make, if you say anything <laughs> that's not in the mainstream, you know, you're all oh, your conspiracy theorist, you know, it, it was like that. That's, that's how my, you know, like I've had to do most of my healing by myself because it's, because I was well aware of psychologists out there. If they tried to help you, they could lose their jobs. It's just them that everybody conditioned into and you know from the police to the psychologists to the teachers to the social workers everybody's involved yeah from from top to bottom yeah so it is tough to come out and, and talk about this stuff because there are so many people that are going to say you're crazy you're a conspiracy theorist this and that and try and make you look insane crazy should be locked up put in a straight jacket this woman's mental, you know, but you're brave. You're doing, you're doing the right thing and you're healing yourself and you're doing an amazing job. Yeah. I mean, I, I I'll tell you my favorite phrase in the whole world is that the truth set you free. Cause I'm such, I'm madly in love with the truth. I mean, it's the illusion that keeps people dumb, isn't it? Buying into the illusion and the falseness and the fakeness that keeps them subdued. Yeah, I just, I, I hope that, and I can't wait till the time where it happens collectively because it's just, I know it's going to be rough and I know people are going to want to hate all these Satanists and everything. And the thing is, that's, it's really pointless to hate them. I think humanity's biggest learning as all of this stuff unfolds and comes out into the open and we learn the truth about really what's been happening. The biggest and the, the hardest thing for the human race is going to be to forgive and to love and to move on. Not necessarily, not to agree with, not at all, but to, you know, forgive these people and to kind of move on from it. You know, that, that's going to be the hardest thing. You know, everyone's going to want to hate, but that's just going to fuel the rage. Oh, and, and, and we, we've got to clean it up. We've got to clean up the karma. They've kept us trapped. We've been trapped. Oh, so trapped. And um, forgiveness is the only way. And um, kind of the way that I've been, seems to be, had the most success with um, forgiveness and I'm starting to you know my, my I, I've gone through some awakening and I'm starting to have like I'm starting to lose concept of, of our time construct I'm starting to have a lot more um, a, lo a lot more realization of 
everything happening like right now, or that there is there is no time, and that all of the timelines and past lives are all just right here. Like I, I have, I'm getting beginning to have that concept. And um, so when I look at forgiveness, I'm saying, you know, let's just leave that event right there. We're not going to carry it around with us anywhere. We're not going to take it along with us. I'm just going to forgive those Satanists that did those things to me. And I'm just going to just leave it right there where it happened. I'm just going to leave it there. If I don't forgive, I'm going to drag it all around. And I, I'm, that's kind of what it, maybe what I feel like, maybe what karma is like. I'm just going to, I'm going to feel like I'm owed something. I'm going to drag it around with me. Um, and from my that's why we're here at the moment to, you know, as a human species, people that have been through this kind of trauma and people that haven't, in this reality and others is to deal with all of the, 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 the karmic trauma, whatever you want to call it, you know, leave it behind, leave it here from this reality, from other multiple quantum spaces, you know, past lives, parallel realities. Let's just leave it where it is instead of, you know, having this pain within the soul, within our energy field that we're taking from one life to another, leave it, heal right. it, you know, and let's just move on and, and ascend and, and, and move into a higher vibrational state where all we can do is is is, is love unconditionally and right. see a learning experience or a remembering experience and, a, and an opportunity to grow and, and to heal instead of blaming and judging and hating and and all of this stuff right so i i, I that's what forgiveness has been looking like for me is just i'm just going to leave it right there um i know that i have to look at it to heal it you know, because that, again, the truth sets me free. So I look at the truth, I heal it, I leave it right there, and I forgive it. I, and I forgive it completely. And, and then I could tell you very honestly that um, it does create a space for love to come in. Um, I just have a very, we're, we're all one. So like it or not, I'm one with that, with those people, because <laughs> we're all one. <laughs> and um, so that's at the collective level, you know, so I, I look at it as if I was looking at it as me as an individual, and this is, this is where I really know that I'm one, it's just me, you know, I, I can say, well, I have dark aspects of me. You know, just listen to me going through traffic. I'm going to be saying some nasty stuff <laughs> when I get frustrated with slow people, right? And I have a potty mouth. Um, so, but I can like still love me as a whole, even if I have a dark side. So I think like, you know, that's how we have to look at it when we forgive these atrocities. Um, we're all one. We just have some of us in the shadows. <laughs> and but we're all one so we just we need to accept that we need to accept that and 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 love needs to go out unconditionally everywhere and, and it's you, better for everybody would you say that's your number one piece of advice for anyone that's kind of having these rememberings these traumas these flashbacks yeah Going in love yeah oh. and 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 when i'm in the that pain i actually have to I have to tell myself that's not who I am. That is the, the story, okay, that I experienced in this incarnation, but it's not who I am. And I am the observer of the story and I can learn and gain wisdom and forgive. Um, that's sometimes how I bring myself out of, like I said, those ghost pains are sometimes so extreme that I could get lost in that pain at time. And, um, and I know that, I know that the healing process is not supposed to be re-traumatizing myself, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like, okay, all right, you know, you're there, you, okay, you know what happened, like bring yourself out of it. That's my story, not who I am. Anything else flying around in your consciousness that you want to get out now and get off your chest? 
Um, Crazy as an insane as an and as insane as it may sound. <laughs> I, I just I, I just have a it, it's embarrassing for me but it's something that I've shared rather openly with people that know me is that is that I have I did uh, I have died um, and and in some ways I feel like uh, so so my I remember committing suicide when I was 16. Um, my dad had just abused me. He had brought some prostitutes in from the city and, uh, had just like shot me up with, I'm guessing heroin because it went in my arm. And, um, when he was driving the prostitutes back, like I just went into the shower and I cut on myself, but I was afraid to really go for it. I was kind of chicken. So I had a lot of little teeny baby cuts and um, which I would not recommend um, because I, I bled out really slow, which made the death really, 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 really painful. Um, but I do remember dying. Um, I do remember like my heart stopping and my lungs stopping. And, um, I remember rigor mortis sitting in my jaw and, um, I had cried out in my pain. I had cried out to, to God and, um, and then I changed it and I had cried out to, to Jesus. And um, so when everything, when all the pain stopped and I realized I was still me and there was light around me, I looked over and I did see Jesus sitting there next to me. And um, so I had, I had died and, um, I, I suppose it was somewhat my choice to go back, but, um, but I, I did feel very much like he was saying I needed to go back and I don't remember a lot of it, but it seemed like I was with him for a while and he, explained at length why I needed to to go back. Um, giving me things like, um, you know, if you put a pebble in a pond, you know, that one person makes a difference and that the, pe the stuff goes out. Like, I think, I think he kind of like, kind of showed me what it would be like if I didn't return. You know, what would happen to the people that I knew and, and then kind of how that would not happen if I returned. Um, he also said that when I did return, a lot of there was still going to be a lot of bad things happen to me, which made me go, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. Please don't send me back. Um, but somehow I feel like, see, so I've been working with Jesus pretty much on my healing through the whole thing, and. And I did, I did go back. So by the time my dad came back, um, it was really weird. He, he, I was, I stepped back into my body, um, and it, and rigor mortis had taken over the whole body at that point. So I couldn't move. I, I, I stepped into my body somehow, and then it fell to the ground and I, I was completely paralyzed. I couldn't move anything. My dad got home and he picked me up and put me in the bed. He didn't really care. He was more concerned about cleaning up the blood in the shower. So he spent the next two hours trying to clean up the blood in the shower. And then eventually came back to me and I don't know, just being a chiropractor, I suppose he just knew to kind of massage my body. He'd done some testing on me and, and I was not responding. My body wasn't responding. He massaged me and eventually was able to move again. 
And I feel like in those, in a few, in those few moments, like as soon as I stepped in my body, I completely almost forgot everything that had just happened to me. And, so, uh, but I feel like I was kind of like talking to my dad about Jesus. I just saw Jesus and he said, you, sh you should do, you shouldn't, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know, but it seemed like I was speaking things to him. What, what, when, uh, did you kind of rise up out of your body and communicate with Jesus outside of your body? Um, so it seemed like he was, see, I was, I was on the shower of the floor or, or the floor of the shower when he was just sitting there next to me. But then I realized I was not in the shower anymore. I was with him somewhere else. Um, it seemed like I was in, um, it seemed like I saw lots of things, like I was in paradise, um, which is why I definitely did not want to come back. <laughs> uh, it just seemed like I did like walk through gorgeous scenery with him and we talked a lot about why I needed to go back. Um, and then when it was just time, like I said, I kind of stepped back into the shower and into my body. And like when, you, when you're on the other side, like you're thinking like is as big as the universe, you, you know everything in the entire universe. Uh, you can just think on something and you're, you're there. Like, uh, and, then, and then like coming back into uh, my body, like you, you just squeeze into this, this brain and, and you just become really dumb and dull again. And I was, I was dumb and dull almost instantly. And, the, and then the only thing that I was thinking after is my body's not working. Then I, then you're just completely on the body. There was a, an instance where we snuck down and in, in my understanding at the time, and, and this is way before, like now I kind of heard, you know, I've gotten into some more of the metaphysical stuff and I've heard like dimensions and stuff like that. But for me at the time, uh, I, he brought me to the second heaven and in the second heaven there was it was all rock caves and stuff and there were demons in classrooms uh, all being taught stuff and he took he snuck me down there like we were sneaking and we we're like you know he was like not making any noises we we're sneaking past all these classrooms and we went into this room and this huge demon, who again looked like a huge reptilian, uh, came in. And I was sitting there and I had a ruby on my, on my forehead right here. And I was just sitting there and they, the demon was really pissed off. And he's yelling at Jesus and Jesus is yelling at him. I don't really know what they're saying. Uh, but Jesus had a contract and he was like, this and they're like this back and forth back and forth <laughs> and they're fighting and I think Jesus got his way but somehow I feel like something there was some agreement that was made and and I, so I very honestly feel like somehow I got out of the cult and it has something to do with that that somehow I, I was able to break free and it had something to do with that how old were you then uh, so the, the, the suicide was at 16 and then some of the memory of, of that, of what that I started to recover when I was in my thirties. You feel it was around your thirties that you totally became free then and things were still kind of happening up to and including your thirties or at the start of your thirties. Uh, yeah, because, um, it was at that point that I was beginning to hear, um, Jesus speak to me. So it started to train me about men and women and how we are created in love and uh, sex, how it was supposed to be, what it was supposed to be, about relationships, how they were supposed to look like, what they were supposed to be like, uh, the history of sex and the history of women. He was, he's really big on 
how women have been abused so badly. But then he said it was by design. He said that um, like our sexual energy is our creative energy and the most powerful energy that there is. And he said that the reason that it's attacked is especially and especially through the woman, because uh, he it's by it's by design the way that a man loves a woman. There, there there's a a design, and um. And if you attack the woman, then she is is not going to be receptive to the man. Like you abuse her, and she's like, I don't want to, you know, and that's that's really painful for a man to go through to have happen to have women like a woman especially the one that he's in love with like re be repelled from him so it causes a lot of pain anyways so basically the the design of these attacks uh and at the time i thought he was just talking to me about the church um but now you know you look at you look at at Rome and you know the, the powers that that killed him are very similar to the powers that what we're dealing with and so he's he's still a revolutionary he's still very against the powers of the planet uh, he was very in tune with it when he was here and he he started to teach me about it but it's by design that they attack us sexually it's, it's, it's 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 the worst thing that they can do to us as humans. And did he talk about feeding, feeding and harvesting sexual energy? Um, he just said it's messed. It it gets destroyed uh, through the abuse. A okay. woman is not operating in her highest level of energy, and if she isn't, then. Definitely, the man is not sure. as well. Okay. Um, but it's creative. It's creation. It's creative energy. It's how we create. The man who fathered my children like beat me, and um, there was a couple times where he did beat me to death too. But Jesus was right there with me. Like he just like got me out of my body, held me. You know, and then I just went right back in. <laughs> It's just like, I don't know. It just seems like. It's been a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah. And, and that, so that's another controversial subject is people who have, have previously died and had these near death experiences. It just seems like everything that's in my life is controversial. Like I literally can't speak to anybody. I can't share my personal self with anybody because I'm just one big controversy. <laughs> And it, it's been lonely, <laughs> but at yeah. least I, I, I do have my guides at least. <laughs> You're doing it right now. You're sharing and getting it off your chest, out, of, out from your heart, out from your mind. Yeah. Out from the depths of your consciousness. Yeah. On a certain level, you're removing a lot of this toxicity, so it's awesome. I just hope that there's more of us, like when we finally, if they're being defeated right now, like that's the thing is that there, there's going to be a lot of people that need help, that Absolutely. need our help. Last four years um, since we've been training people in star magic, I mean, every training, we always have people that come along from different abusive situations, sometimes ritual, sometimes sexual, and a lot of them have demons inside of them or demons in the field. and you know, we, we, we clear them and, and do what's necessary, but it is, it is rife. And, and, and when you start exploring this field and you're opened up to it, you realize how, how gigantic it is. It's not like you're in the minority. This happens to so many people. Yeah. Um, and I think having a brave, beautiful soul like yourself stepping forwards and expressing themselves, it does give other people the courage to, to come out of their shell and to share it and to, to either seek help or do their own healing or do whatever's necessary to, to kind of you know shed this stuff and leave it behind and it's not an easy journey to go on but you're living proof that if you're if you're prepared to kind of face this stuff you can get through it and and, and you can rebuild your life and you can rebuild rebuild your consciousness you right. know 
and take great power from it too. You can empower yourself by going through this stuff. Um, even though it's hard. Yeah. You can grow definitely. I mean, you're, you're living proof, sister. Yes. Yes, I am. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity to, to be with you in this space and to, and to hear your story. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely inspired me and thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Just, um, I've lived an insane life. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's been amazing talking to you today, Tracy. Thank you Thank for being here. And uh, to everybody watching, listening, uh, we love you. You're amazing. You know, we are a global family. And it's important that we support each other through this awakening, through this ascension, through this process. And it's important that we, we love ourselves first and foremost. And like Tracy said, forgive. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you everyone for watching. Peace out. Thank you for watching this video. I respect Tracy so much for coming forwards and sharing her story. I know that it's going to give others courage. I know that it will give others hope and trust. And it will allow others to realize that they're not alone that there are other people in this, and there are thousands, thousands upon thousands of children that are suffering right now or have suffered for many, many, many years, and it's despicable. It's beyond human comprehension on one sense, but this stuff does happen. If you're a survivor, please know in your heart that there are people that care about you and love you and are there to support you. You're amazing. And thank you for being on this planet once again. Thank you for being brave enough to step up. Through these crazy times of transformation and human evolution, please go deep into your heart. Realize that you're an incredible human being. Realize that you have power and potential. Realize that you're a galactic being who came from the stars to have this earthly experience. There's nothing the universe can chuck in your way that you can't handle. When we come together as a human species, as brothers and sisters on this planet, when we work together and create together, we're a massively unstoppable force. Please go out into this world and hug tightly. Never be the first to let go. That's the golden rule of hugging. Love fiercely. Love ferociously. We have to, we have to during these times. It's so important. It's mission critical. Remember to forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive other people. Be in acceptance. It doesn't mean that you have to be in agreement, but just be an acceptance of what's unfolding around you. No judgment. Observe yourself being in this reality. Raise your frequency and keep it high. And love other people. Love everyone. Love is the key. Love is the major force that's going to change this world, beautiful soul. You have the universe flowing through your heart, through your veins, to every cell of your physical body, to every biophoton in your light body. Love is powerful. Let's love, love, love. Remember to check out our website, starmagichealing.com, and I'll see you again real soon. One love, one heart, one human family. Peace out, beautiful soul. Infinity is the ultimate ascension toolkit. We have life-changing meditations to heal illness and disease. 
enhance business performance and heal relationships. You can access them at home or on the move. Your vibration will rise as you connect deeply. You have access to short yoga routines to activate you in different ways. Cosmic yoga to activate your third eye, open your heart and your crown chakra, help you sleep better and much more. The instruction is easy to follow and carefully explained. Your mind, body and soul will be brought into perfect alignment. There are a large variety of high vibrational recipes that are quick to prepare. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, snacks, desserts, shakes and smoothies. You can make for yourself or the whole family. The food is healthy, tasty and fun to create. You can choose from a selection of light codes and light language transmissions. Light language is the language of the soul and our super powerful transmissions will expand your consciousness and turbocharge your vibration. At the same time, the visual light codes will activate your pineal gland and switch on your body's natural potential. There are complimentary healing sessions uploaded regularly. As a valued member, you can access them 24-7 to heal. There are private healings geared towards different mental, physical and emotional issues. Any deep pain will be brought to the surface and healed so you can live a happy life. There are also monthly two hour interactive masterclasses where you will discover the latest information on healing and transformation and top tips for the month. New codes and frequencies are shared that you can apply in your life to go deeper on your journey. This is a one-stop shop for your healing and ascension requirements. If you want to be a high vibrational human, happy, full of joy, totally healthy, full of vibrancy and vitality, then infinity is a must. You get seven days free with unlimited access to make sure it's for you. See you on the inside, beautiful soul.